meaning as the higher good. It was from this that I drew my fundamental moral conclusions. Aim up. Pay attention. Fix what you can fix. Don't be arrogant in your knowledge. Strive for humility because totalitarian pride manifests itself in intolerance, oppression, torture, and death. Become aware of your own insufficiency, your cowardice, malevolence, resentment, and hatred. Consider the murderousness of your own spirit before you dare accuse others and before you attempt to repair the fabric of the world. Maybe it's not the world that's at fault. Maybe it's you. Maybe it's you. You've failed to make the mark. You've missed the target. You've fallen short of the glory of God. You've sinned. And all of that is your contribution to the insufficiency and evil of the world. And above all, don't lie. Don't lie about anything, ever. Lying leads to hell. It was the great and the small lies of the Nazi and communist states that produced the deaths of millions of people. Consider then that the alleviation of unnecessary pain and suffering is a good. Make that an axiom. To the best of my ability, I will act in a manner that leads to the alleviation of unnecessary pain and suffering. You have now placed at the pinnacle of your moral hierarchy a set of presuppositions and actions aimed at the betterment of being. Why? Because we know the alternative. The alternative was the 20th century. The alternative was so close to hell that the difference is not worth discussing. And the opposite of hell is heaven. To place the alleviation of unnecessary pain and suffering at the pinnacle of your hierarchy of value is to work to bring about the kingdom of God on earth. That's a state and a state of mind at the same time. Jung observed that the construction of such a moral hierarchy was inevitable, although it could remain poorly arranged and internally self-contradictory. For Jung, whatever was at the top of an individual's moral hierarchy was, for all intents and purposes, that person's ultimate value, that person's God. It was what the person acted out. It was what the person believed most deeply. Something enacted is not a fact or even a set of facts. Instead, it's a personality. Or more precisely, a choice between two opposing personalities. It's Sherlock Holmes or Moriarty. It's Batman or the Joker. It's Superman or Lex Luthor. Charles Francis Xavier or Magneto. And Thor or Loki. It's Abel or Cain. And it's Christ or Satan. If it's working for the ennobling of being, for the establishment of paradise, then it's Christ. If it's working for the destruction of being, for the generation and propagation of unnecessary suffering and pain, then it's Satan. That's the inescapable, archetypal reality. Expedience is the following of blind impulse. It's short-term gain. It's narrow and selfish. It lies to get its way. It takes nothing into account. It's immature and irresponsible. Meaning is its mature replacement. Meaning emerges when impulses are regulated, organized, and unified. Meaning emerges from the interplay between the possibilities of the world and the value structure operating within that world. If the value structure is aimed at the betterment of being, the meaning revealed will be life-sustaining. It will provide the antidote for chaos and suffering. It will make everything matter. It will make everything better. If you act properly, your actions allow you to be psychologically integrated now and tomorrow and into the future while you benefit yourself, your family, and the broader world around you. Everything will stack up and align along a single axis. Everything will come together. This produces maximal meaning. This stacking up is a place in space and time whose existence we can detect with our ability to experience more than is simply revealed here and now by our senses, which are obviously limited to their information gathering and representational capacity. Meaning trumps expedience. Meaning gratifies all impulses, now and forever. That's why we can detect it. If you decide that you are not justified in your resentment of being, despite its inequity and pain, you may come to notice things you could fix to reduce even by a bit some unnecessary pain and suffering. You may come to ask yourself, What should I do today? In a manner that means, How could I use my time to make things better? instead of worse. 
such tasks may announce themselves as the pile of undone paperwork that you could attend to, the room that you could make a bit more welcoming, or the meal that could be a bit more delicious and more gratefully delivered to your family. You may find that if you attend to these moral obligations once you have placed make the world better at the top of your value hierarchy, you experience ever-deepening meaning. It's not bliss. It's not happiness. It is something more like atonement for the criminal fact of your fractured and damaged being. It's payment of the debt you owe for the insane and horrible miracle of your existence. It's how you remember the Holocaust. It's how you make amends for the pathology of history. It's adoption of the responsibility for being a potential denizen of hell. It is willingness to serve as an angel of paradise. Expedience. That's hiding all the skeletons in the closet. That's covering the blood you just spilled with a carpet. That's avoiding responsibility. It's cowardly and shallow and wrong. It's wrong because mere expedience, multiplied by many repetitions, produces the character of a demon. It's wrong because expedience merely transfers the curse on your head to someone else, or to your future self, in a manner that will make your future, and the future generally, worse instead of better. There is no faith and no courage and no sacrifice in doing what is expedient. There is no careful observation that actions and presuppositions matter, or that the world is made of what matters. To have meaning in your life is better than to have what you want, because you may neither know what you want nor what you truly need. Meaning is something that comes upon you of its own accord. You can set up the preconditions, you can follow meaning when it manifests itself, but you cannot simply produce it as an act of will. Meaning signifies that you are in the right place, at the right time, properly balanced between order and chaos, where everything lines up as best it can at that moment. What is expedient works only for the moment. It's immediate, impulsive, and limited. What is meaningful, by contrast, is the organization of what would otherwise merely be expedient into a symphony of being. Meaning is what is put forth more powerfully than mere words can express by Beethoven's Ode to Joy, a triumphant bringing forth from the void of pattern after pattern upon beautiful pattern, every instrument playing its part, disciplined voices layered on top of that, spanning the entire breadth of human emotion from despair to exhilaration. Meaning is what manifests itself when the many levels of being arrange themselves into a perfectly functioning harmony, from atomic microcosm to cell to organ to individual society to nature to cosmos, so that action at each level beautifully and perfectly facilitates action at all, such that past, present, and future are all at once redeemed and reconciled. Meaning is what emerges beautifully and profoundly like a newly formed rosebud opening itself out of nothingness into the light of sun and God. Meaning is the lotus striving upward through the dark lake depths, through the ever-clearing water, blooming forth on the very surface, revealing within itself the golden Buddha himself perfectly integrated, such that the revelation of the divine will can make itself manifest in his every word and gesture. Meaning is when everything there is comes together in an ecstatic dance of single purpose, the glorification of a reality that no matter how good it has suddenly become, it can get better and better and better, more and more deeply forever into the future. Meaning happens when that dance has become so intense that all the horrors of the past, all the terrible struggle engaged in by all of life and all of humanity to that moment becomes a necessary and worthwhile part of the increasingly successful attempt to build something truly mighty and good. Meaning is the ultimate balance between, on the one hand, the chaos of transformation and possibility and on the other, the discipline of pristine order whose purpose is to produce out of the attendant chaos a new order that will be even more immaculate and capable of bringing forth a still more balanced and productive chaos and order. Meaning is the way, the path of life more abundant, the place you live when you are guided by love and speaking truth, and when nothing you want or could possibly want takes any precedence over precisely that. Do what is meaningful, not what is expedient.